Hi, I'm author illustrator Mike Bolt and today I'm going to give you guys a little tour of my studio and a little look behind some of the work that I do and maybe we'll do a little activity together too. So my studio, my office or whatever you want to call it, is in my home so every day I wake up I just have to come down the stairs and enter through here. have my main workstation here. It's a couple of computers. Most days I'm illustrating, that takes up most of my time. But other days I spend time writing. I have a, a great view of the, our backyard, which is basically looks like the, the sun. So here's my bookshelf, uh, where I keep all kinds of things. Some things that inspire me. Uh, the other creatives that I know have made. Um, some stuff from our childhood um, and just kind of things just that I enjoy just keeping around. Uh, I also have up here puppets that I had made from my my very first book that I had ever done, uh, 1, 2, 3 versus ABC, which is one of the few books I don't have on my shelf. I tend to give them away as gifts and stuff um, and I've given away all the copies that I have. This is worse problems. What else can I show you? Oh, this is kind of neat. Let me just flip the camera around. So in this drawer here, I have what are called my folded and gathereds. Tula likes them too. And so the publisher will send these to me. And I got copies of a lot of my different books in here. And, and essentially these are these are the books before they are bound and made and, and publishers will send them to booksellers and stuff so that people can look through them and decide if, if they want to order them for their store. But it also gives me a, a way to check my work and make sure that my colors are pretty close to how they should really be. Here's kind of my, more my workspace where I have like my markers and brushes and other things. And then I come to my computer and I'm gonna, why don't I show you guys a little bit, some stuff from there. So this is my drawing tablet. It's a uh, Wacom Cintiq. And with it, it's kind of like a digital pen or if you had an Apple pen for an iPad, something like that. Um, it, it's, what I, it's what I mostly use to draw. But people will often ask, so, when I get a book, how, how, does the, how does the process work? Well, generally it's pretty standardized. Um, if I didn't write it, such as the case for this example I'm gonna show you today. Um, this book, this is a book I'm actually currently working on right now. So you guys are kind of getting a sneak preview. But I get this manuscript. Uh, manuscript is just the story as it's written. So this is the whole book, um, Goodnight Alligator, and I will go through and I'll start to make notes, and so it's, it, has all of, it has all of the lines and all of the text. And as I'm reading it, it, st it starts to give me ideas. What happens then is I start to draw and I have to plan out the book. Now, normally uh, that's with thumbnails. And let me see if I can draw many of my thumbnails up. All right, like I was saying, these here, these are my thumbnails. So you can see, I actually draw them really small. So I have all the scenes planned out. This was supposed to be like the tug of war for the bath scene. And I go through, I number the pages so that I make sure my pages are all gonna be numbered right. Let's see, this is, this is kind of the rough work for my, for my book. So you'll see here, this one's actually right near the end already. But what I do is I kind of go through and I, do a couple color keys, some samples to see if this is how I actually want to color it. But these are all the spreads of the book. So it would be on this side I have my, uh, this is the left hand side of the page and this is the right hand side of the page. Yeah, I have to make sure all the text fits in everywhere. And, and while you're doing it, you also want to make sure that each page works with the, the page afterwards. After a little while is I'm going to start to uh, color these. And so normally I color kind of in order. And I'll start at the beginning of the book. 
Um, often I leave the cover to the very end. Some of my sketches though, I, I have lots of different ideas for the sketches. This one's a little closer to a final. So I'll plan out maybe where the title's gonna go, um, different scenarios that could be happening in the scene. And they might look pretty much the same, but there's little variations in them. We kind of settled on a little bit later on this theme of her being a little bit more crazy on the bed, but here is our little alligator and kind of sticking the tongue out on there. Um, let's see what else did we have? We had making a face this way too. I had totally just not even her on the bed. And you can see I, I work pretty scribbly. Sometimes it's even maybe hard to see. And then I'll start to color it up. A number of, I can choose all my colors. I have all these different layers. So and I, sometimes I work on different layers and sometimes I don't, but in this case, I painted the alligator and the book and a few other elements on different layers. And this helps me if I need to make revisions. And so what I was looking at though here is, I didn't, I wasn't too fond of the shape or the color of the blanket or of the bed. And so I ended up changing it. So in the most recent version, now you can see the flashlight is a little bit brighter and it, this is where the title will go. And it shines all the way out of the page instead of like a spotlight. The bed is, the blanket's now a little bit more reddish purple rather than reddish orange. And, and, uh, and I think it looked a little bit better. And then the bigger change is the color of the bed. Um, there are a few things that I moved around a little more, but for the most part, I, I, I thought the idea of a white bed uh, made a little bit more sense. Why don't we draw our little crocodile? And normally I'll, I'll make a, a new layer and I'll select the color I want to sketch with and I select the brush, which is a pencil tool in this case. And I'll make it a little bit darker. Normally I'm gonna sketch a little bit lighter, but we're gonna make it kind of like a darker blue. And to make our alligator, I like to start with uh, kind of like her head and her nose because um, we're gonna put the eyes in this area here. I'm gonna put her nostrils down here. And then I'm gonna come back up and do a big old crocodile smile. And the alligator in the story loves flashing her teeth, which is, I think is really hilarious. She acts all menacing and kind of a little bit like a brat, but she's really actually quite sweet. And she tends to compromise because her parents are telling her, well, you can't do this and you can't do that and you have to do this and you have to do that. And she's not exactly wanting to follow the rules, but she always gives good alternative suggestions. And I think, I don't think I have the teeth exactly the same on each page, but there's a lot of them to color, that much I'm remembering. Mm, it looks, definitely looks a little bit like she's a little stinker, that's for sure. People think that when you draw something more, you just kind of become perfect at it. And the truth is, there's that saying that says practice makes perfect. And I've never found that to be true. What I have found to be true is when you practice a lot, something you improve at it. So I like to say practice makes progress instead. All right, and have our little gator. Maybe Gator is just sitting here. Being so sweet, doesn't she look so sweet? Gonna draw Gator's foot here. Maybe the tail will go around the back. Draw 
got some lines over here. Knee goes. The other foot. And the tail. Well, that concludes today's tour of uh, my studio space. Thanks for joining me and uh, until next time.